Go ahead. It's too cold. Is it a rivalry? <laughs> oh, God. I got to be careful how I answer yeah. this because you know, this is going to be like headlines. <laughs> Again, that's, those, those are questions for you guys to, to determine and, and establish. For us, it's a, it's, a, it's a game that we obviously want to bounce back from the Colorado game um, and get three important points. Obviously, being at home, it's important we get back on track, and so um, you know it, it just happens to be uh, a team that's close in proximity to to our city, um, as well as uh, you know a team that is I think probably still trying to find their identity a little bit. Um, you know, being an expansion team, so uh, it's a good opportunity for us to, to pick up points. What's the most important ingredient, in your opinion, in a rivalry? What has it got to have? Is that going to be your story? The the rivalry Depends bit. On your answer, I uh, <laughs> it, it, it can't be manufactured. It, there needs to be there needs to be real substance within within the game. So, um, you know, uh, until we we step on the field, it it, it's, it can't be something that's that's made up. It's it's got to it's got to feel real. How did um, Ozzy and Tiago look uh, in their training sessions today? Yeah, look good. Look good. Uh, happy to to have them back in the group and. Um, you know, excited to for for obviously what they bring to our group. Um, you know, both individually but also collectively. Charlotte uh, hasn't scored, hasn't won, but has looked good at times in their games. From watching film, what do they do well? Um, you know, I think they they do a decent job of changing their. You know, they're able to change their system on on the fly. Um, you watch some of the guy the games. Sometimes they're playing. You know, four in the back. Sometimes it's five in the back three in the back. Um, so they're able to, to adjust accordingly with the personnel that they have on the field. And uh, that's something that, you know, tactically we're going to have to make sure we're aware of. I was going to say, does, does their kind of newness to the league change or make it more difficult for you to prepare for them based on like little amount of what you've seen? I wouldn't say it's difficult. I would just say it's a little bit unknown. Um, you know, it's it's unknown from the, the fact that there's, there's not a lot of video to watch. Obviously, some new players to the league. Um, you know, so that that part is a little bit of a question mark, but um, it makes us have to to really do our homework and, and make sure we're prepared from from all different angles. How have you digested the Colorado game? Because you know, we talked to Andrew after the game, and he was saying that you know the team played pretty well. If you look at the stats, you know, Atlanta dominated most of the stats, um, but you, obviously you didn't get the result. You know, the result was pretty lopsided. So how do you kind of digest that throughout the week to, to bring into the Game. Yeah, I mean, listen, you, 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 you put a result like that behind you as quick as possible and, and you move on from it. Um, you know, you obviously learn from it. I don't think it was a 3-0 game. Uh, but with that being said, I've always said <laughs> goals change games and, and ultimately our job is to score goals and, and defend. And um, that's, how, that's how games are measured. And so we can talk about, yeah, it wasn't a 3-0 game. We were better than what the scoreline showed. But at the end of the day, we, we need to be able to defend our box better and then also, you know, take our chances at the other end. And um, so it's one of those games where you watch it back, learn from it, and move on. Ronald said that uh, he thought that the team kind of lost its concentration a little bit at times against Colorado. Uh, do you agree with that? And, and as you know, this is kind of an issue uh, for the team for a while now. Does it concern you that that might have happened? I think when you look at – when you look at – games at any level, um, whether it be European games, Champions League games. Um, there's not many games where goals are scored, where it is an absolute, from back to front, beautiful goal, absolutely pick apart a team. Um, so at, at any level, right? And goals are normally scored from a mistake here, a mistake there. And you get punished for those those mistakes. Uh, in the midst of a game, concentration is obviously hugely important um, because if you don't have it, it has the possibility to lead to conceding a goal or conceding a chance or whatever it may be. Um, so, in that broad question of Ronald's comments, yes, the goals 
that we've conceded and, and even some other chances have a lack of concentration uh, or a loss of concentration. Um, but again, I think throughout the 90 minutes, I wouldn't say that that was, we had a lack of concentration for 90 minutes. Okay. Quick one, um, have you spoken to Anton Walks ahead of the game on Sunday and have, have you been keeping in contact with him? Uh, yeah, we, we, we exchanged, uh, not leading up to this game, but before this game. Uh, obviously, I, I'd, I'd spoken to him. Uh, technology nowadays, you know, you can, you can FaceTime, you can see, see anybody you want really around the world. But um, so being able to, to chat with him briefly, uh, you know, he seems to be in a good place. Obviously, he's dealing with a little bit of an injury. Um, so we'll see, uh, see where he's at uh, individually. But... Uh, but yeah, you know he's uh, he's a guy that obviously, you know, spent a, a few years here at this club, and um, you know he's certainly developed and, and grown throughout his career, and uh, you know it'd be good to see him uh, when he comes back. Does Brad ever Facetime Gene? He's never Facetime. <laughs> who? <laughs> Face who? Joe or I? He's never Facetimed us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thanks, Brad. Thanks, guys. Is this a mic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Looks like Connie's. Just checking. Yeah. Are we good? Yep. Go ahead. And okay. Questions for Gonzalo. Can, can you provide any clarification on what happened with Ozzy and is he available for 90 minutes if needed on Sunday? Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. I mean, we we made a statement on on what happened to Ozzy. Was we needed to do to run a few more tests on him. Uh, our own doctors, the league's cardiologist, and a third party cardiologist uh, check Aussie and everybody in conjunction feel very comfortable with him continue playing so that's very good news for us uh, first of all we were concerned about his health and that's why we we prefer to wait until we check everything and I think it's very good for us the mood of the team changed dramatically once he was here and that's good he's been training with us two days and now I mean he's fully reintegrated into the team is he available for 90 minutes? Well, I don't know about 90 minutes because he didn't train for five days. Okay. Uh, I don't know even if I'm starting him. I have to to, right. to make a decision there based on, on a few things, numbers, and how we, we see Aussie. But for sure, he's available for the game. And can you all say what the issue was, or is that a HIPAA violation? Yeah, it was just an evaluation. I mean... I don't want to share too many details because of all his privacy and all that. But I mean, the good news is he's back into into our team. The players uh, really like uh, just just to talk to us. He and he brings a different uh, mood to the team, and and that's very good news for us. Uh, and Almeida, uh, first training I think here with y'all. I don't think he trained yesterday, did he? Well, yesterday was a day off oh, for, okay. for the team, but he trained in here in our facilities uh, individually with Ricky, our fitness coach. Uh, he trained today fully. He's fit. He's been training uh, in Argentina, and we were just desperately waiting for the visas with the three of them, with Ibarra, Santi, and, and Tiago. And now the three are back in the team. And Tiago specifically, I mean, he, he looked good today. Uh, we're very, very happy about his reintegration to the team. So he's available for selection then on Sunday? Yes, yes, okay. he's. And I'm sorry, so, well, I'm yes. sorry. so, so uh, same thing. Same he thing. came in earlier this week. How, how's his fitness? and? Same. I mean, it, it, it took uh, one or two days where we evaluate him, and after the surgery and the rehab that he did in Argentina as well. Uh, so we needed to make sure that his fitness levels and his uh, concerns on certain movements were okay. He's okay. So again, he trained full today, and he's available as well. You must be a happy man. A very happy. Man. <laughs> Always and 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 yes, and even when when we didn't have them, obviously we miss them. But I'm very happy with the team. I'm very happy with every player I have in the squad, and and it's just it's just a, a, a very good job for me to to be coach of Atlanta United. Well, I was going to ask about Franco Ibarra. I assume that he's kind of just similar, same with those other guys available for selection and all that. But how how much does his availability help you, considering the the lack of numbers that you've had in midfield so far this season? Yes, well, he's a little bit different. He's still a little bit with rehab, okay. so he's here. Obviously, he's uh, with us. He's uh, on the rehab still. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be available for this game. We'll have to see something tomorrow, but uh, not very likely that that he's going to perform in in this weekend. Is this an injury that he picked up in the in the in the scrimmage? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yes. Okay.
Um, same question I asked Brad, and it's going to sound silly, but is this a rivalry, Atlanta-Charlotte? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what Brad said, but I mean, for us, every every match is important, obviously, right? And with these new franchises coming and the close we are from Charlotte, and and you know, they beating the record of system, uh, attendance in a game. I mean, I mean, hopefully, with time, it can feel as a rivalry. It can feel as as as, as a rival in a good fashion, in a just competitive on the field fashion, and uh, and it can feel like that. At the moment, I would say it's false to say it's a rival uh, rivalry because we never faced them before. Uh, but hopefully, in time, it can turn into something like that. Yes. Is, is it more difficult to prepare for a team like Charlotte, who's an expansion team? Not only the expansion team, but you're playing them so early in the season. There's just not a lot of film to evaluate. Does that make it more difficult, or, or how does that just change the way that you prepare for them? Well, yeah, yes, maybe a little bit more difficult because uh, I mean. We yes, we don't have any background on the team. Sometimes you even reflect a little bit on last year's games, but not really. I would say that even when we scout uh, Kansas City, we didn't take in consideration many of the games of last year. We were more focused on trying to get some film from preseason games, and 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 you know, it's not as as important. But yes, you have a better reference when you know the team from a while. You know their tendencies, their weaknesses. So I would say this it's a bit harder. Yes, but nothing major. I think the last two games is very clear how they play, how they try to play. His coach is very well respected in in the coaches world. He, he his his work with Independiente del Valle was very good and everybody noticed that. So we know how how he wants his teams to play and I'm excited about facing uh, 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 Charlotte and facing his coach because I think he's going to do very well in MLS. I'm sorry, one more personnel question. Darren said earlier this week that y'all were hoping Marcelino Moreno is available uh, for 90 minutes uh, for Sunday. How's, how does he look? Well, I, again, I don't know if for 90 minutes. I, I don't I don't go in that direction yet with him. I, I think we have to see the evolution of Marcelino throughout the weeks, checking the numbers and, and checking that, that he's uh, available maybe for 90 minutes at some point, but uh, we will see. He can maybe start the game. He can come off the bench. I have to still decide that. But uh, he's still coming back from a from a big period of time. He didn't train right. in almost any part of preseason, and it's hard for me to after two or three weeks just to put a player available for 90 minutes uh, with with that background. In Mexico, you played Almeida uh, as a left wing. He has said he'll play anywhere, but he prefers attacking midfielder. What what do you envision if you use him on Sunday? Uh, where he might go? Well, in the attack, I mean, we still have to see, uh, again, we can put him in that 4-3-3 as, uh, you know, on the, on the left side, I would say, uh, as a third midfielder on the left, as an 8, as a 10, uh, or as an inverted winger on the same system where he starts outside but comes inside. Mm -hmm. I think that's how he played most of his career in Belles. But uh, I still have to see how he integrates to the players, to the, to, to the players next to him, and what is the best combination. And, and maybe at times it's going to be mobile, and, and it's going to be one filling a gap and the other one filling for the others. So uh, it's still work in progress, I would say. Okay. Okay. You lost Luis Araujo in, in the first game. Um, and then in the game, you replaced him with Don Dwyer. Then you used Brooks Lennon uh, on the right side and against Colorado. Is there an adjustment that Joseph has to make when he's playing with someone like Luis versus someone like Brooks Lennon who's going to maybe stay wider and, and be more of someone who's going to try to deliver balls instead of Luis Araujo who's going to run in the middle and try to score for himself? Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that just Joseph. I think the whole team understands the different characteristics that both have. Uh, obviously, Luis is an inverted winger. He can come with his left foot, so sometimes it's easier for him to slip passes through the back line and, and find Joseph in behind the back line or just dribble as he normally does and he dribbled past three, four players. I think Brooks is more of a true natural winger on the flank, right footed and his actions are more on the flank next to the sideline. Uh, with that being said, he can also play a little bit in the pocket and then Ronald can overlap, but there are differences there. Just We just know that both have strengths and weaknesses, and I think we just need to adapt to those movements, and I think the team understands that. It's not a big thing for me. The style of the team remains the same. It's just little movements, just, just changes, but we feel those roles with different players, I would say. 
it seems like since Louise went out that Joseph has been dropping deeper. There's a kind of maybe even almost a, a ten roll at times. Is that an instruction that he's been given, or is it something he's kind of naturally doing to maybe make up for that loss? Yeah, we, we were talking about that with, with Joseph. Joseph is a player, uh, number nine, that, that plays very well in between the lines. He's a very good connector in there. And we were just talking, obviously, uh, as what's his main role, right? And, and yes, as much as I like him to drop in certain moments to, to find the combination plays with the midfielders, I want him also to finish inside the box because that's where he's more dangerous. So uh, there has to be a balance there. I don't think he's overdoing or overcoming in, in between the lines because no Luis, I don't think is the case. But uh, at times it happens because of the tactics of the opponent or they are very tight on him. So he wants just to attract some of them. So we create a space in behind for others to run. I think Joseph is a very smart player to drag people out and then someone else to take that space. Uh, but we just need to find balance into that. And, and when is the right timing to come? When is the right timing to attack the back? And I think we're going to uh, improve after this week. Yeah. OK. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Gracias.